Hi everybody, my name is Tamir and uh, today I want to talk about how in Fiverr we built a dynamic content management system with Redis Graph. So uh, I've been working for Fiverr since 2020. I've been using Redis for a few years now and in Fiverr is the first time that I got to know Redis Graph and uh, I'm going to share with you uh, my experience with it. So for those of you who don't know Fiverr, um, Fiverr is an online platform that connects businesses with on-demand freelance talent, uh, which basically means that you can go there and uh, get services in more than 500 categories like design, uh, graphic design, digital marketing, programming, video animation, everything you can think of and uh, get uh, someone do that for you, do something for you. Um, in 2020, we had over uh, 3.4 million buyers. Uh, we're active in more than 160 countries. Uh, our, our offices span across three continents, headquartered in Tel Aviv. We have more than 550 employees worldwide. And, um, well, if you want to learn more, just Google us and uh, have fun. So what's a content management system? Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's a system that bridges the gap between front-end teams and content editors. So uh, developers and designers can create components, uh, which then uh, content editors, who are people who are uh, non-technical, can use these components and create new content like landing pages, banners, articles, and stuff like that. And then the backend, our backend, can take these components and fetch them and render them on the Fiverr website. So a few fun facts, the CMS service handles up to 700 requests per second and peak traffic times. It displays content in six different languages and stores about 13,000 components. And of course, these numbers keep growing every day. So to get a better understanding of uh, how the CMS works, uh, let's take a look at this example. We have this subscription seller landing page. It's a new feature uh, we've been working on. We released it about two months ago. And it's made out of uh, a landing page component, which is this brown rectangle here, which embeds a hero section, hero component which in turn has a uh, text block. This text block has a uh, paragraph, right? And a call to action button. So uh, each one of these components can uh, be uh, reusable theoretically. Uh, for example, we, might, uh, we may want to use this uh, button here uh, somewhere else uh, in the website. And maybe we then want to change its color, so we want to have that change reflected across all the Fiverr website. Maybe we want to use the hero section and put it in an email campaign. Um, well, you get the point, right? So the concept is what the CMS does is able to uh, fetch these components at runtime, each one separately, but with all its child components. So if we want to um, fetch the landing page, we would also fetch the hero and the text block together. And one of the goals, of course, is to be able to fetch them all together as fast as possible. So let's take a look at how we, uh, we've done that in our first version. So the first version was all about um, all about performance, right? We want we wanted to have these pages, these components rendered as fast as possible. So the obvious approach was storing them as is. This means that um, storing each component with its child component. So we accomplished that by using a a document based database and embedding the child components in their parents, inside their parents. So we would have this landing page here with 
its fields and we would embed the hero uh, component as a, an embedded document and embed the text block as, as a document inside the hero. So, um, and also, of course, uh, we would save each one of them as a separate document. So this, of course, um, uh, provided us with uh, great performance because um, embedding the documents means that um, now that we want to fetch the landing page, we would fetch it all together with all, all its child components in just one query, right? And we can also cache it. So obviously, that was really great for performance. But we had pitfalls that we just didn't think of. Um, it turns out that maintaining this uh, structure was pretty hard, pretty complex, and uh, required a lot of maintenance. For example, what happens now if, um, if we change this just one thing, one field in the text block, right? For example, let's take this text paragraph and we change just one character. So we would have to save the text block again, then save its parent, hero and then save the landing page so that's that's just a whole lot of writing to do in the database that can stress the database out um, it can also lead to data inconsistency issues because uh, what happens if if um, a few writes are being made at the same time or updates are uh, are coming to the CMS uh, at the wrong order uh, so that that can be a problem. Um, also, we have limited query capabilities here because it's a document-based database. If you want to index a field, we need to know the exact path. So, for example, here if we want to uh, search by content uh, in this text paragraph here, right? We need to know how to get to that. We need to know the exact path and also, we don't have any relational queries here. We can't uh, do anything that relates to any other document. So, um, as the title implies, uh, we fixed all that. We addressed all these issues by using a graph database, specifically Redis Graph. So, what we basically did is replacing um, embedding of documents with links so with um, with the example we saw before instead of embedding a hero document inside a landing page document we would have a landing page node and then link it to a hero node so we split uh, these documents to metadata which is uh, ID, uh, when it was created, who created it, stuff that our content editors don't uh, don't touch, and the real content, which is uh, the, what we call the fields. So we have these blue nodes for um, the metadata, which are connected instead of embedding, and these blue nodes are also connected to their field nodes, which is the actual content. And we have this brown field node for each locale, for each language, one of the uh, the six locales the CMS supports. So when a content is requested, if you want to request this landing page, right, we do our query, for example, by an ID, and then uh, the graph database does the rest for us. So the graph database would then fetch all these nodes uh, alongside the the main landing page node so we don't have to do anything ourselves we don't need to do any bookkeeping we don't need to know how to get to these nodes uh, the graph database does does all that for us and we get back a response in a table form and then all that's left to do is convert that table form into just one big json and respond with that so what did we get uh, out of it eventually? Um, well, obviously we got much greater stability because um, 
the concept now, the modeling is so simple, is so much simple than what it was before. We don't need to do any bookkeeping. We don't need to remember anything. Um, it's a lot more stable. And uh, of course, we have new query capabilities that were not available before. We can um, um, do relational queries, something that was just not available before. That means um, querying by something that's connected to, to another thing. Um, we, 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 you just don't have that in a document-based database. Um, and also, we don't need to know exact paths of, of fields. Uh, for example, we can just uh, look for a landing page that has some uh, content in some paragraph anywhere in the landing page and not just uh, specifically in the hero section or in another section that we know where it is. Um, as far as the performance goes, uh, it's pretty fast. I gotta admit that uh, I was pretty impressed. Um, the response times are about 5 to 10 milliseconds for the average content. So that means um, as long as, as we don't surpass 30 or 40 connections um, uh, in general or 100K in size, um, the response time is about 5 to 10 milliseconds, and that's great. But if we start to abuse that and we start fetching like really large con content with really large entries, uh, it, it gets worse. So, so my tip for you, you really need to know the results are, you need to get to know the data and just not abuse the database. As long as you don't abuse it, you get great results. Uh, we also no need, uh, don't need cash anymore. Um, and that's with a star here because uh, we we do need cash for uh, extreme extreme cases, but that's up to optimizations. So right now we do use uh, cash for uh, the extreme cases where we have uh, content of like two megabytes and hundreds of connections or thousands because uh, uh, that can really stress uh, the the graph database. Um, so, so for these cases, we use cache, um, but not for anything else. So our next steps are probably going to be, uh, expand our tech stack and use that not just for, uh, the current tech stack, tech stack that we're using, which is a uh, Kotlin with uh, spring boot. Um, we're probably going to use that with, uh, uh more tech stacks. And uh, also, uh, we're going to work to uh, add more, uh, more queries and optimize them so uh, we can really, really uh, harness the graph power. So uh, what are the takeaways I want you guys to take out of it, out of this uh, presentation? So uh, first of all, uh, doing, using a read-optimized view is not always the obvious choice, right? I mean, you might think about the performance, but think also about the pitfalls. Think about managing it, right? So uh, in this case, a graph database uh, does all the managing for us. Um, in general, keep graph database in mind, uh, even if it's not the obvious solution. We also, we always think about graph database as something for fraud detection, recommendation system, calculating shortest path, uh, stuff like that. But it might solve, it may solve uh, problems outside of these classic domains. So be open-minded about it. Um, also, before you start implementing, invest time to understand the concepts of a graph database because it's a less traditional kind of database. It's not a document-based uh, database. It's not SQL. It's something completely different, so uh, try to get the hang of, the hang of it, right? And last but not least, plan your project ahead. Uh, you need to properly model and implement and optimize your environment. These things take time. It's not just plug and play. Um, you know, one um, one change in your query can significantly significantly optimize uh, the performance or make it worse, you know? So 
dedicate time for that. Uh, feel free to learn more about us and apply for a position. Uh, we're always looking for talented people to join our team. Uh, I'll be happy to see uh, more of you guys there. And uh, just go to fiverr.com slash jobs and see if there's something you like. Also, you can check out our blog and uh, see the kind of uh, challenges we're dealing with every day. So thank you very much. And I uh, hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you.